Yeah, so this is the uh, Hubble Optics. This is a 17.5 um, inch Coulter mirror I had from about 1980. It's a good mirror. It's about one eighth wave, uh, about an inch thick. So this was a little bit customized for the focal length of that mirror. But this is basically the 18 inch Hubble Optics telescope. And I'd just like to talk a little bit about uh, what I've done to get it working and get pointing now, repeatable pointing to about um, five arc minutes full sky uh, with a 50 point model. So a few things I learned just to pass on. Um, the balance, because this was a custom length, the balance and the, the mirror weight is different than the standard thickness two inch mirrors. So the balance is really important. So I added some barbells to the bottom. Um, and then I found that the um, balance is very critical to good pointing. And so depending on the eyepiece, I add a weight at the top and this is just like experimenting. So I add like one water, I call it one uh, unit of, of, of water bottle. So that's a one water bottle. I've added two and th this one's, the way to one water bottle, bottle seems to work good for various eye pieces. Um, I do use a, a Bluetooth connection to the laptop, which I, I think works a lot better than the uh, Wi-Fi that I used to use. A um, few other problems and how I overcame them um, with um, help from Tong from Hubble Optics is the azimuth um, was stopping, it was sticking. And so I added um, an extra spring. So there's two springs. Um, and then I added some WD-40, tried to work it in to the Lazy Susan and then just spin it around a lot uh, until it loosened up. And now I don't get any more errors at all. So it's it's got good azimuth motion. Um, let's see, a few other things. I guess the hardest part of, of getting the, t like, the, there is a learning curve, and the hardest part for me was getting the the um, the wire wrapped. Um, so this is the altitude wire, and you want to get it pointing maybe like, like it is now, so about 75 degree up or so, 60 degrees up, and then get the wire about in the middle of that wheel, roughly, because it's going to go side to side. Um, so you can see here, it's coming to the side. And, th and that, that took me a while to learn how to fix that wire and get it on and off pretty quickly. The hardest part really is if you're taking the telescope completely apart, then getting the wire through the Teflon. So there's a hole, it's hard to see, but there, there's a hole in the Teflon and I used the tape method. I just held it in place with some scotch tape and then it stays and then put the telescope together and wind it around. And then it's got to wind around that wheel and then attach to the spring. Um, so it's cloud. I'm in, I'm in uh, near the Dallas area in Texas. So a few things that I, I've been doing recently is trying to refine the pointing model. And so I try to look mainly in the east uh, and then the west and just get wide, widely varying stars. And then I just use the software, the SciTech software. And um, and then throw away some bad, bad stars. And then it, it, it seems to work. So this is about a week now and I've been, it's been re repeating every night. Um, so I park it and then unpark it and it goes, you know, like to a star at Rigel or a star in Orion within a few arc minutes. So I'm pretty happy. Uh, one more, one more thing is that I added, uh, these bearings, um, to the sides. So there's one in each corner. So here's another one. Without that bearing, uh, as it moves up and down, it's, it's gonna wobble a little bit side to side. So I, I was able to drill and tap some holes um, and, the, and, the, and the bearing solves that. So it's, it's really smooth motion. I don't, I don't wanna show it right now. Uh, I will later because it's parked and I, I don't wanna like tamper with it until I'm out tonight observing.
So I'll continue this later.